So I want to get in a little bit, like I said in the beginning, how prophet teaches or what that's like. And eventually I'll get into what's expected of a seeker if, if you want a prophet or a wayshower. It's interchangeable. If you want a wayshower to help you, what's expected and what could you do to be more successful? So there's no guarantee if God's trying to prepare you to be a wayshower, you'll make it. He has a lot of backups. And if you're not being prepared to be a wayshower in this life, if you want to, if you're a seeker and you want a wayshower to guide you up the mountain, as far as you're willing to, to walk and make some effort at, there's no guarantee. But there's, there's a golden opportunity. So I want to tell you kind of what are some of the things a wayshower can do for you. So how does a prophet teach, help, and guide a spiritual seeker? Let's first look at two sides of a prophet. There's an outer physical prophet, wayshower, that can talk to you, can read your letters and give you feedback, can do discourses like today, can give you guidance and corrections, you know, can listen to you, maybe give you his opinion. Uh, there's the physical, and that has a big advantage, but then there's the inner teacher. The inner teacher can come to you in the world like dreams. Like Abraham was guided by Melchizedek, he couldn't call Melchizedek physically, but on the inner, there's a whole inner world of communication. If you ever get a nudge or an intuition, and that can be fine-tuned to where it's, it's just as good a language almost as this outer language. So there's the inner side of prophet. He can come in dreams. Uh, he can come and be with you spiritually on the inner. You can feel him. You can see him. You can hold his hand, talk to him. Like a lot of you, I think most of you were at the mirror exercise on Zoom. We're on Zoom, I'm in the studio, you're all in your homes. And as a way sure, I came to each of you. Most of you saw me. I had my hands out. You said, hi, some of you. I handed you a special mirror. And then I got, did a guided contemplation. I was right there next to you, each of you, all at the same time. While I was physically in the studio miles away. And I had you raise that mirror up and see yourself as soul, how God sees you. That beautiful golden light, whatever. Remember that? Most of you were there. That was the inner guidance of a prophet. So there's the inner and outer. So I'll talk about those a bit. Uh, the outer prophet can also do books, like the Spirits of Keys book, which most of you consider scripture. We'll talk more about that. Any living prophet like Isaiah or Gaetan back in Lemuria that leave writings, I consider those scriptures along with the Holy Bible, but not exclusive to the Holy Bible. Okay? Like Isaiah was a prophet of God, ordained by God. If he left writings, that is scripture. And now, of course, has been accepted into the Old Testament. So, so when a prophet does discourses, or draws on the board, or gives examples, or whatever, where's that information coming from? It's coming from the Heavenly Father. Either directly listening, prophets, wayshores, when they're ordained, become one with the Heavenly Father. They're, they're close. They're not the Heavenly Father, but there's a very fluid communication. And you have been up here for like an eight-day retreat. You see it every day. Uh, where I'm getting information right off the press from the Heavenly Father, what you need to know. So I'm getting the ways and the teachings and the guidance and the suggestions, whatever you need, or maybe a word that might change your life, directly from the Heavenly Father. And that's true with all ordained prophets. I also know His ways after doing this for 30-some years. So, and having done this in former lifetimes, so I also can, some of the basic stuff I can just help you with. Some of the things that are right off the press, I get, to, I listen like all prophets, all way showers, to that inner communication. Where do you get your inner communication? You may get it from the Heavenly Father, but I pass it on in dreams or inner communication. I was guided to do that mirror exercise for you. And the Heavenly Father guided me all the way through that. And I did things different than I'd done it before because he said, do it this way. I was listening to him as I was speaking to you all. 
So you get your guidance from the way shower, the prophet, while I pass on what I'm getting. And if you trust the prophet after a lot of years, then you start trusting the guidance. At first, it may take time to trust. And that's normal. Everybody builds their trust at a different personal rate. And you're not going to be pushed on that. But the more you trust, the easier it is for you to accept and be receptive to the information. So what's that called when I'm speaking and passing on something directly that I'm getting right now, coming into me, down that beam of light over me, and I share something I've given right at that moment? It's called the living word. The living word of God. Prophets, wayshores are not God, but they speak for God since he's up at the 12th heaven. He wants somebody down here he trusts to speak for them. So, and how many have experienced that? All of you in here. Yeah, that's been here for a while. That's the living word. So the wayshower is also what? The living word. Often, okay? And God knows each of us better than we know ourselves. So sometimes I'll say something that seems odd to one person. I'm also talking to you physically, like all way showers, but I'm also talking to the, what? The eternal you, soul at the same time. So when I speak the living word, if God gives me that, I'm speaking something nobody else in the room might know. It might not resonate. But one person here, it might change your whole direction. You hear it at a level that really resonates. That's because I'm passing it on from the Father that knows exactly what you need at that exact moment to maybe change your life or keep your progress going up the spiritual mountain, okay? When I'm done today, I'd like you all to share for the newer folks and I'll ask questions. We'll get into more discussion. Um, so the way short could also be called the living word. And this idea that God knows us better than we know ourselves is stunning. And up here in the retreats and God's better life, sometimes I'll say something. I'm not even quite sure what it means, but I just look at somebody and I'll pass on what because I, I trust what I'm getting after this many years. And I can see it basically almost changes your life. A word or a phrase or a sentence. At reunion, somebody said one sentence I said, which I passed on uh, from the Heavenly Father, changed everything for him, for the better. Okay? That's the living word part of the Wayshore. The wayshore doesn't just show the way and then stop being wayshore, then become other things. The wayshore takes you all the way to the top. That might you might start with the wayshore to kind of point the way to the mountain, but the wayshore is also the living word. The wayshore also comes in dreams. So he's also the dream guy. He's the dream teacher. Okay? So you don't have a way shower early on. There's the mountain, and then he abandons you. And then you get the dream teacher, or you get the living word. The, it's still the way shower, but you start learning. The way shower's got more going than just pointing the way. He can speak the way. He can come to you in dreams. He can come to you in the physical, talk to you, guide you, give correction if necessary. He can also come on the, on the inner with you. But it's still the way show. And this little different way of looking at this than some of you have been up here for a while. To put a little twist on this, which I hope will be interesting for you. Um, the way shower can also give the seeker, don't you become a knower? But first you're still a seeker low on the mountain. You're seeking to know the God's ways. You're seeking to meet God and all that. You're seeking to get higher view of the mountain where you can see a bigger picture of life and the reality of life. But, but the way sure will often give a gift wave, a wave of spiritual energy and actually feel it hit you. And that's to help maybe clear a block or maybe break complacency or help you get more consistent, whatever you need. Um, it might heal you spiritually We've seen spiritual healings up here, emotional healings, physical healings, um, mental healings. Remember early on, and not soul, but our physical body, our earth suit, that soul comes into, the real you, has most people has worries, 
that don't feel worthy of God's love, guess who would like you to believe that? That's a liar guy telling you that. Um, maybe fear, guilt, uh, excessive attachments, lust, which would be lusting for drugs, anything that controls you, some little plant that controls you, a divine spark of God, and you're controlled by a can of beer or a chocolate bar or something else. Uh, the prophet will help free you from that, both with outer guidance and inner guidance. So the way shower can also be called what? The healer. A lot of healing up here. When you're in that valley, you get pretty beat up in the early part of the mountain. Uh, to get on up in the mountain, up, up past the clouds, you can't get up there without some gratitude and starting to feel worthy of love. You can't carry a whole lot of guilt. Imagine climbing a mountain with 300 pound backpack. Guilt, fear, worry, anger. We need to slowly take out the rocks in your backpack. And that's what the way shower does. He takes out rocks in your backpack. But he knows which one. Which one first, guilt, fear, or anger? Well, the Heavenly Father would tell him, take out half the fear or half the guilt. Maybe you still need a little bit to teach you. But eventually, maybe farther up the mountain, let's heal the rest of the guilt. Let's completely heal the part where you're unworthy of God's love. So the way shower, doing all that stuff, is really healing you, besides what's generally called healings. And 80% of healings are not touching somebody or putting light on them and all that. That's fine. We do that. About 80% in my experience over 30-some years has been giving you clarity of the situation. And if the Heavenly Father gives me clarity or a dream gives you clarity and you understand why you feel a certain way and you know the root of it, you go, oh, okay, that's it. Or why you're angry. Oh, that's why. Or why you feel guilty. So about 80% of the healings from my experience as a way shower have been the Heavenly Father giving me an insight about you, your history, and give me the root of a problem. And over weeks and months and years, I'll slowly reveal that to you. Often I won't early on because the Heavenly Father wants you to also dig a little deeper and do your part. So the, the way showers will give you enough to help you help yourself, but not to where you become a socialist, not where you become soft and you can't help yourself. We want you strong, mature, where you can guide other people up the mountain someday with the help of the way shore. So there's a balance, like raising kids. You help them when they need help, but you don't help them so much where they become unable to help themselves. So often, the Heavenly Father would tell me the root of a problem and I might take a week or days or months or years to reveal it to you as he tells me to reveal it at the perfect rate that's right for you, okay? And that's healing. When you get rid of fear, guilt, worry, and some of these things, that's healing. And of course, physical healing is mm -hmm. mental and emotional. So the way shower could also be called the healer. All right. When God ordains a prophet, God keeps a certain amount of the Holy Spirit because He's God. He'll never give it all away or He wouldn't be God. But He gives a certain amount of His Holy Spirit, the light and sound of God, to His prophet. So His prophets slash way showers, we can transition to the same thing, are concentrated aspects of God's voice, His Holy Spirit. That makes it easier to be connected with Him. It makes my pipeline to communication really good, like a hotline, very clear communication. Um, and I pass on most of it. Sometimes I don't feel the group's ready. I might hold back a little while, but generally I pass on everything he tells me. What was that? <laughs> Somebody's telling me? Um, so as a concentrated aspect of the light and sound, what do you think I could give people if it's in your best interest. I could share God's light with you, and I do that. We used to use things up here, all, most of the new people, and I decided, and I checked with the Heavenly Father, he said, okay, I want to have a great experience at you, and I would decide to share light and sound of God. 
and almost everybody had an experience of light inside of God. And they never came back. The hue is beautiful, but the hue doesn't do that. The way shower shares the light and sound. So the way shower is also the light giver. And you've all experienced it, been up here while the light of God. And is that a big deal? It's huge. How does God heal and the way shower? How does God send clarity? How does God get what he wants for you down here to you? What's his pipeline? Is it fiber optics? Is it Bluetooth, Blu-ray, whatever this stuff is? Uh, does he beam it down on his cell phone and hopefully you got the right app? No, none of those. He gets clarity. He sends joy, peace, wisdom, healings, insights, maybe something about a past life, if it will bless you in this life. How does he get it to you? Through his light, his light, his voice. The Holy Spirit is his voice, called the Holy Spirit. But we know the Holy Spirit, more precisely, has two components, light and sound. You may hear certain sounds that aren't physical. That's a beautiful gift of love to experience the sound. But most people are more familiar with God's light. The Bible barely talks about sound. And most clergy, I don't think they really understand sound, but most people are familiar with God's light, the white light, something like that. There's all different colors of lights. So if the Heavenly Father allows his way shore to share light, or if the way shore gives a healing or clarity or an insight, how am I passing it on to you? Through the light, even if it looks like a look, a look, a certain look, I can pass love, his love, or a touch. After contemplation, I'll walk out sometimes, touch somebody's shoulders, and it can change things. But I don't have to even be in the same room with you. I could be on the other side of the planet. God's light can find you wherever you are. It's with you. And that light delivers all his blessings. And as a light giver, like Jesus was, all his prophets are light givers. Jesus, back up with that, Jesus was his literal son in the role of way shower. How does God view way showers and prophets? In the role of his son, not literally, I'm not God's son, but I'm now his way shower in the role of. The only one that was in the role of, and it was actually the son, was Jesus. And that shows how much he wants us to come home, how much he loves us. We're never abandoned. We never have to wait for somebody to come back and incarnate. There's always somebody to help us. So love former way showers all you want. Awesome. But you need the help of the current one. Okay? You need that outer teacher and inner teacher. So, so when a prophet heals or gives light or comes in a dream, it glorifies the Father. It's all about glorifying the Father. So when I pass on light, I'm passing on, I have the privilege, the great privilege, to pass on the Father's light. It's His light. When you have a healing up here, He's healing you. I have the privilege, I get to pass it on and deliver it. I'm like where the rubber meets the road, but it's his road, it's his rubber, it's his peace, it's his clarity. His way shores pass it on because he's up there, but he hasn't forgotten about us down here. So he gives the way shore all these things more than just the way shore. And it all glorifies the Father. And that's not just a term, that's in every way shore's heart. And if it wasn't, they wouldn't be a way shower. So a way shower would guide you on the inner, outer, whatever. And the inner is like in dreams. Uh, I'll ask later how many of you have the way shower come to you in dreams. Or in a guided contemplation. Or in a contemplation, you're hewing at home. Do you ever feel the way shower's presence? Yes, we'll talk about that later. So much of the way shower's job is to teach through actual experiences. How do most of you learn the best? You can study swinging a baseball bat to hit a baseball, watch every video on YouTube, have a coach talk to you, and that helps, like scripture helps. 
That's awesome. But is it different when you swing a baseball bat? Yeah. I think most people learn best by both. The academic side, scripture, my teachings and discourse in my books, Isaiah's books, uh, Jesus' teaching through Paul and the four apostles and all, um, four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is awesome. And I think we need that. But if you combine that with a way shore, they give you real actual experiences, like I started with, actually having God himself at the 12th heaven tell you he loves you. We've been told he loves us, but is that, does that take it to a whole other level? Absolutely. Now you're not a seeker, you're a knower. Faith is awesome, but now you know he loves you. It changes everything. That's just one example. So if prophet can come to you on the inner and teach you and guide you, or on the outer through books and discourses, whatever, could the wayshire also be called a teacher? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this wayshore you thought you left way behind, it's the same, same dude, same little old guy out in the mountain. You're finding out he's more than just the guy pointing up there's God and go around that boulder. He can give you light. He can give healings. He can teach you on the inner and the outer. How many teachers can come to you in dreams and tell you the same thing they taught in the class? The way shower. That's a big advantage. Okay. So if he can come in dreams, and dreams, the God gets reaches us in dreams. And the Bible, a lot of people quote the Bible, but incorrectly. An angel of the Lord came and told Joseph for Mary to do this and that. Move to Egypt. The angel of the Lord came and told him to move back. That it's safe now. And they often forget. An angel of the Lord came in a dream. And what's the angel of the Lord normally in the role of? Wayshore. Not always. Other former wayshores on behalf of the current wayshore will come in dreams. But often the wayshore is the one coming in the dreams, right? We needed Jesus, it was prophesied, we kept him safe. In a dream, told the parents, get out of Dodge, head to Egypt for a while. Now it's, we, we need him back. He's supposed to be in uh, Jerusalem and Nazareth and that whole, whole area. Um, in the Sea of Galilee, that's where his mission was. So the way Shower says in a dream, okay, come on back. And fortunately, his family believed and they understood dreams and they trusted what they got in dreams and probably also on the inner and maybe some outer messages to come back and start his mission when it was time. So, so way sure it could be. A, so what, what did that do for Jesus by an angel Lord, the way sure coming in a dream? It protected him, didn't it? And I know many of you have been protected in life from car accidents. Going, you've been protected by going to the correct doctor that's right for you. You've been protected in a lot of ways and your family's been protected, your loved ones. Hmm. Who does God have those that, that are interested in him and willing to make an effort to come home? He takes care of his own. And that includes protecting his own. So who do you think is the one protecting and guarding those that are seekers at this level, the way shore. So he's also, also going to be called the guardian. So this little guy on the mountain you met going up in my parable, parable of the spiritual journey, I think it's called on YouTube, about an hour video. This little old man you meet on the mountain thinking you're doing all by yourself. Apparently there's more to him than just the guy pointing up the hill. So he's a dream teacher, a teacher, a light giver, a healer, um, of course the way shower, and now he's protecting. That doesn't mean you don't have issues. Sometimes you can have a rough patch in life that will make you stronger. You dig deeper <coughs> and you'll be better if you go through it. Uh, like the emperor moth uh, going through that chrysalis. It needs that hardship squeezing through that chrysalis to get fluid in the wings so it can be a butterfly. No longer a little crawly thing, but now it's free sailing around. Well, the way shower is also helping you be more free, redeeming you from some of the restrictions on freedom in these lower worlds. 
you're so much more free of soul than you can probably imagine. And the way sure, like that chrysalis, sometimes you need to go through some rough patches. But the big stuff that could really wipe you out, knock you completely off the mountain, get you totally out of your body through my car accident, up here our track record's pretty good, you're being protected. Because you're interested in God, you're drawing close to God. God is drawing close to you, that's in the Bible. You draw close nigh to God, that means close. He will draw close to you. You pull away from him, he backs away. He's respecting your free will. He's still watching you silently, but he kind of leaves you alone. But if you draw close to God by asking, being a seeker and wanting to come up the mountain and having some trust, or at least wanting to get to know a way shower, then the dream guy, the healer, the teacher, the light giver, the guardian, God protects his own and you become one of his own. Doesn't mean you can't stub a toe, get a, you know, little bumps, but the big stuff he takes care of. He truly does protect his own. So the way shower can be called the, uh, the guardian. Now what could the way shower be guarding you against besides traffic accidents? you know, falling down the steps or something. Maybe more important stuff. Uh, it might guard you against complacency. That's the killer on this path. You think you're doing good and you're doing well. You start having a really abundant life. Things are going well. And you start getting complacent in it. Complacency. So guardian, uh, the guardian part of the way shore might try to wake you up a little bit. You're getting complacent. That's death if you get very complacent. And the farther you go on the path, generally the more complacent you get because life is so good. You start thinking you're doing this all by yourself. Maybe you don't need the way shower. Maybe just go directly to the Father uh, and down the mountain you go. It doesn't work that way. Like Jesus said, you can't not go direct without the way shower. You couldn't find him. You don't know the way and he, he will not allow it. But does the way shower, you have to pray to the way shower to get to God. No. The way shower is not between you and God. The way shower is more like Cupid, pointing the way to God and taking you God, trying to get you and God to meet. You pray directly to Heavenly Father, however you want. The way shower is trying to accomplish your goals, if they're spiritual, to go as far as you can this lifetime spiritually become more mature, maybe be able to help others find God. But the prophet's not between, waste between you and God. He's actually pointing you and trying to take your hand and God's hand, basically literally put you in God's golden hand, which all my disciples have sat at the abode of God in a big golden hand, literally. So, so not in prophet's hand, but if you take prophet's guidance, Prophet, a way short can get you up the mountain where you have those experiences. But I'm not between God. You still pray directly, Heavenly Father. You talk to God all you want. I'm not an in-between, more like a Cupid, if that makes sense. Putting the two, two together. He loves you, you love him as soul, and trying to make that, that meeting possible. And the process, you have a great abundant life down here. Have more joy, freedom, less guilt, fear, worry. If you don't make it to the top, your life is still better. Every step, you're still better off. So, so lack of consistency. Say so you do the hue every day, and you're growing. You're getting spiritually nourished. Because I'm mostly teaching soul. I don't take your bodies to the heavenly Father. I take you as your eternal you, soul, the real you, and it needs to be nourished to be teachable. That ball of light in you. And you're doing well early on, then all of a sudden, oh, I got this figured out. I'm, life is good. I don't need the hue. And you start getting sloppy. You do it every week or two. You're going to start sliding down the mountain real quick. So I might suggest as a guardian, part of Wayshore, you need to stay spiritually nourished. That's foundational. I really can't teach you if you don't get your daily spiritual bread. Uh, and then the negative forces. There's a the negative side. The liar guy, the thief down here, just took out about eight people in my view. It's not easy down here. It's a war down here, a spiritual war. And the liar guy, the thief that comes in the night, the negative powers, they love to take you out. 
So you don't have to, I wouldn't worry about that, but you need to stay nourished, you need to keep your focus, and Prophet will guide you. And guide, if, if you follow the Prophet's guidance, you don't have to worry about that. If you turn on the guidance and try to go solo, you're going to hit a problem on the trail, and you get the liar dude will, will want to take you in a different direction. So the Guardian is a lot more than just auto accidents, breaking legs, and that kind of stuff. We're getting you to the right doctors where they'll take care of you, where another doctor might not. It's lack of consistency, complacency, reminding you to make, you, not, you gotta do your part. You need to make sufficient effort. We'll help you when you need help, but we want you strong where you can walk up the mountain yourself. Like, like I said, you raise a child, you want them strong and independent. They won't get that way if you don't help them some, but you don't wanna help them too much. And that's what the prophet does, but you need to make sufficient effort. And if you're not, a way shower will remind you. And hopefully you're grateful for that.